for 264. Here we are, the start of the nine days. And uh, I've been off most of the summer, as you guys know. The last show that I went on was at least a month ago. And um, hope you guys are doing well. Want to know if anybody's out there. Want to see you guys chat a little bit. Today, we're not going to go on long. Today was a sad day because it is the uh, 22nd, 22nd passing of the Yurt site, the 22nd Yurt site, which means the day that my father passed away. Alexander Peretz, Ben Pesach Yehuda, the Malka. So Alexander Peretz was my father. Pesach Yehuda and Malka were my grandparents from Poland. And, and that's the scoop. And so I want to know, first thing is, if you guys could hear me, just send me a quick chat that you could hear me. I presume you can because I... Some of you are watching and nobody's told me you can't hear the sound. So I presume the sound is good. We're, we're a little bit of a different setup today because it's the summer setup. Once Tishabov comes and finishes, we will uh, we will go back to the regular mic with keyboard and music setup. But uh, the next nine days will be all, if I go on, it'll be all talking. Um, yeah. So hope you guys are doing good. And um, today, the 29th of Tammuz, it's already Rosh Chodesh. Av here in Israel means the new moon of Av, which means the yurt site is finished, and the show is Le'ilu Nishmat for the for the um, elevation of the soul of my father. He was um, a great dad and a great person, and I'll tell you a couple of stories about him, and then I'll tell you about what I've been doing this summer. We had a trip to America, and then uh, what's going to be coming up. So it shouldn't be that long a show, but you never know. So here we go. And of course, I would entertain any questions that come across our chat screen. So where are we? Um, let's go first to my dad. My dad grew up in East New York. East New York is in Brooklyn. It sounds like East New York is in New York, but it's not. It's in Brooklyn. And there's actually a television show now called East New York. But I think it's a poli police... It's a police show or some, some sort, I don't know. I never watched it. Um, so my father grew up in East New York when it was mostly a Jewish Jewish neighborhood. And what eventually happened is most of the people from East New York moved away. Where did they go? They went to Queens. But when my father grew up there, it was the 30s. He was born in 1928. So it was the 30s. It was during the time of the Depression. So my, my grandfather, otherwise known as Zadie Pesach, my grandfather, he had a try, trouble making a living. And my father and his two brothers and my grandmother and my Zadie moved 20 times in 18 years. Very interesting stuff. Um, imagine having to move 20 times in 18 years. Not an easy stint. But they weren't the only ones. Because back then, nobody had any money. People made like a penny a week. You know, they would, what are you going, working? My salary is a penny a week. Could you imagine that, a penny a week? Oh, my God. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Um, and, my, and apparently, my father and his friends would play a game called the moving game. And the moving game was that they would, if they would walk down a street and there were no furniture in the street, meaning people weren't moving, that was like a win. That was like a point. Because everywhere you went, there were people moving. This was the Depression. Not exactly a fun time. And, and most people associated Orthodox Jewry with being poor back in those days. Not, not anymore. Back in those days. So the idea was to escape from East New York, and eventually they did. Just like all the, the, um, the uh, different you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Minorities that, that came from Ellis Island. Uh, my my Zadie came from Poland, from Tarnow, through through Austria, through Pressburg. And then um, my uh, grandmother came five years later, and then Bobby Hindu, who came from Romania, also went on Ellis They all came through Ellis Island. Isn't that interesting? Um, okay, so... 
my my father grew up in East New York, and my zaidi was the cantor or the chazan of his shul there, and my father and his two brothers would sing harmony. Now nobody's alive anymore. My father's not alive. He was the oldest. Uh, my the second brother was named Uncle Gus. The third brother, Uncle Julius, they three of them would sing harmony for my Zaidi for Rosh Hashanah. It was really, it was a nice, people people told me it was really, really amazing to listen to. Um, cantorial music was of the moment back then, you know. Uh, not so much right now, although it did have a rebirth. It does have a rebirth, um, but not certainly from the youth, more from the adults who want to hear cantorial music. And of course, the famous Chazen Health God has helped promote that. Um, anyway, my father went to the army in 1950, went to the Korean War. Uh, he was drafted, I'm going to say 51, 52. I'm not really sure. Uh, he was in the Korean War. But he didn't go to Korea. He went to France and Germany. He was actually stationed in France and Germany during the Korean War. And then he came back. He went to Baruch College. Although he might have gone to Baruch before the Korean War, got a CPA, he became an accountant, and he worked for the IRS for 33 years. The Internal Revenue Service, he worked for 33 years, not auditing people, but auditing international companies with foreign subsidiaries. You know what that means? That means that let's say a company like Avis, which has companies all over the world. Oh, yo, 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 JP. Jonathan Powers is chirping in from Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's good to see you. So obviously I'm being heard on YouTube and the microphone is working. If you notice, by the way, I'm wearing a Dodgers cap and a Yankees shirt. No reason for that. It's just summer and I'm being relaxed. We're not programming our, uh, but I'm in the middle of talking about my father's life to today was his yurt site, his 22nd yurt site. He passed away um, on the 29th of Thomas in the year, in the year 2001, a, uh, a month before the Sabaro pizza bombing and two months before 9-11. It was very, very interesting times back then, as it is right now. Does anybody know what's going on? Can somebody tell me? No, you cannot, because we have no idea what's going on. Yes, the Dodgers do not play hockey. Thank you, JP, I know. This is a baseball night. It's summer. Summer, the days of sports, the days of baseball. Anyway, so what I was telling you guys about my father, my father was in the Korean War, but he wasn't in the Korean War. He was stationed in France and Germany, and during a funny dad story was that he was five foot seven, five foot eight actually, and they would have marches, 10-kilometer marches. He would start off in the front of the of the um, group, but he would end up in the in the back row because they would all pass him. Uh, you know, and finally the, the, the sergeant goes over to him and says, Solomon, here. He goes, yes, sir. He goes, good, now we'll all make it. It was a very funny joke. It was told, the story was told many, many times. But my father did well in the Army. And he came home after two years, went to, then he, he was a, an accountant, got a CPA, and he met my mother in the Pioneer Hotel in 1957, July 4th, 1957, and a year later they were married. Uh, very interesting. Um, yeah. So my, they got married in 1958, and I was born in 61. In 61, my dad was a great dad. My mom, thank God, is still alive. She's 88. And yes, so that's the story of a little bit about my father, who uh, always was a happy person, always looked on the bright side, um, never got down. You never saw him depressed, you know. But he was always listening to the Israeli news in Yiddish with his friend, Cantor Moshe Katz, who taught me music when I was eight years old. 
and that was the that was the original uh that was how i started playing music it was in march 1969 me and my brother we went for our first lessons in uh accordion i took 10 years of accordion lessons and then another um you know uh yeah and then when i was 15 i started taking piano and then finally when i was 20 i started playing with a band and then by the time i was 22 which was 1983, I formed the band Kesher with my friend Svi Pill and bass player Joey Friedman and um, guitar player Shlomo Horowitz. We put out the first Kesher album in 84 and then in 85 and then in 86, the first Schlagrock album. Uh, learning is good and the rest was history. Now it's 37 years later. So we are still schlocking after all these years. Okay, a little bit so we, we brought you up to speed in 11 minutes and seven seconds. Um, I was the weird Al Yankovic of Jewish music. Maybe I still am. Because I don't know anybody that's just replaced me yet, JP. Um, but maybe there will be somebody soon. You never know. But I will tell you this. Right after Tisha B'Av, we are releasing a new video. The video is called Drowning in the Internet. I just saw it. It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. Um, I think it's one of the best videos we've ever done. And um, you'll be able to see it. Once Tisha B'Av is over, we will release it. So that's the first thing. Um, now, I just got back from, a week ago, I just got back from America. I was in America for three weeks. Most of it was a personal trip with my brother, seeing my brother, seeing my sister, seeing my mother. Uh, but I also was in L.A. for three days, and I met with my director, choreographer for Daniel in Babylon, my theatrical manager for, for Daniel in Babylon, a couple of potential investors, really great stuff. I must tell all of you, get in touch with me, and become an investor in Daniel in Babylon. It will, you, you'll, you're going to love it. You're going to love being a part of this musical, and it's going to come out sometime in 2024. That's the goal sometime in 2024. So we are collecting money for that right now. Uh, I will let you know all the particulars. All you got to do is get in touch with me by emailing schlockrock1 at gmail.com, schlockrock1 at gmail.com. I might even get in touch with you because I've got all these people who have written me things over the years. So I have to, it's time to write to them. Um, okay, so... That, that's what happened. Now, on this last trip, I also played two shows at the Hudson Valley Resort and Spa, which is a really nice place. Uh, we played, I played a Schlockrock show solo, and then I played a show for Holocaust survivors. You're going to say, Lenny, did you play Schlockrock for them? One or two songs, but mostly Yiddish and uh, old Jewish songs like Hava Nagila. That's what they wanted to Got to give the people what they want, my friends. Got to give the people what they want. In the meantime, I'm starting to work on Schlockrock 41, Old School, a new parody album. It will be out sometime this year. And that's the latest stuff that's going on. All right. So I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. And um, we look forward to talking to you. I might come on again either later on this week or maybe next week or maybe both. Keep on schlocking, everybody. And it's good talking to you. And uh, and that's the story. And let me see. Uh, here we have some people that need a refuah shlema. Moshe ben Yehudit Sarah. Chaya Zizel Barchana. Yaakov ben Sarah. Hinda Rivka bat Devorah. Chaituba bat Hinda and Nechemia ben Chaituba. Nechama Rachel bat Pesel, Yida Silshenel bat Nechama. Yosef, Michael ben Yehudit Shoshana, Moshe Chaim ben Leah. And Rifa'enu to all of them. JP wrote the song Rifa'enu on the album Nisim ben Nisan. And we're going to play that. After Tisha B'Av for you, JP. I will play that. Um, and everybody else here, Elisa Bat Batsheva, 
everybody that needs a for Shlema. Keep on schlocking, everybody. We will see you soon. Stay in touch, and we'll talk to you soon.